the Chinese economy teetering on the edge? Unraveling whether it's on the brink of a collapse for you guys? Is it the end of an era? But before we dive into the current situation, let's take a step back and understand China's remarkable economic journey. Over the last few decades, China went from being a struggling nation to becoming the world's second largest economy. This transformation began in 1979 when China established diplomatic relations with the United States, opening the floodgates to foreign investments and trade. China's growth was nothing short of spectacular. By 2009, it had become the world's largest exporting nation. Millions of people were lifted out of poverty, and it seemed like China's growth was unstoppable. However, with great power came greater challenges. One of these challenges was youth unemployment. In June 2023, the youth unemployment rate, which measures the percentage of job-seeking individuals aged 16 to 24 without work, reached a daunting 21.3%. This alarming statistic means that over one in five young Chinese citizens are unemployed. Several factors contribute to this issue. Firstly, China's economic growth has slowed down in recent years, resulting in fewer job opportunities for the youth. Secondly, there is a mismatch between the skills possessed by young graduates and what employers seek. Many hold degrees that are not in high demand in the job market make it challenging to find suitable employment. This crisis has far-reaching consequences, sparking social unrest and frustration among young people and hindering their ability to form families or purchase homes. Another looming issue is a real estate bubble. Citizens heavily invested in property, causing soaring prices and a substantial portion of the nation's wealth to become tied up in real estate. Unfortunately, government efforts to restrain this escalation came too late, resulting in an economic slowdown. Notably, major property developers like Evergrande found themselves in dire financial straits, some even filing for bankruptcy. The real estate bubble's genesis can be attributed to several factors. Initially, government policies actively encouraged real estate investment to stimulate economic growth, thereby creating a surge in housing demand and elevated prices. Accompanying this was the ease of credit access, as banks readily lent money to individuals, including those with low incomes or high debt levels, amplifying the financial risk. Moreover, a strong cultural preference for property ownership in China added to the fervor, with real estate being viewed as a secure investment and a means to safeguard one's future. This bubble began deflating in 2021, primarily due to the government tightening measures, reduced economic growth and demographic shifts. The repercussions included a downturn in construction activity, directly impacting construction sector employment as well as indirect consequences for employment in the manufacturing and retail sectors. China was also grappling with deflation, as falling prices and reduced consumer spending led to job cuts and a dangerous downward spiral. Deflation can have dire economic consequences, including reduced production and growth. Furthermore, China's shadow banking sector catering to businesses and investors seeking higher returns faced a crisis. Being a complex and less regulated network of financial institutions, China's shadow banking sector has experienced rapid growth in recent years, driven by the pursuit of higher investment returns. However, this expansion has brought forth several challenges, including a surge in defaults and shadow banking loans. The factors contributing to these defaults encompass the economic slowdown and the real estate crisis, both casting a shadow of uncertainty over the sector. To mitigate these risks, the Chinese government has been implementing tighter regulations on shadow banking, aiming to enhance stability. Unfortunately, these measures have made it increasingly difficult for shadow banks to raise funds and extend loans, further complicating the situation. Another concerning aspect is the risk of contagion within the shadow banking sector, where a default by one institution could trigger a chain reaction of defaults among others, potentially causing significant repercussions for the broader Chinese economy. In August 2023, for instance, Zhongrong International Trust Company, one of China's largest shadow banks, missed payments on multiple products, intensifying concerns about the sector's stability and the looming threat of a domino effect throughout the economy. Fast forward to today, and China is facing not one but three crises simultaneously. A realistic crisis, a banking crisis, and a credit crisis. 
several banks have already crashed, and small and medium-sized enterprises, which contribute significantly to China's GDP, are struggling for cash. The Chinese economy's growth rate hit a mere 2.99% in 2022. So what went wrong? It boils down to governance mistakes. The government's interference in the economy led to excessive lending, both on and off the books. Businesses and even local governments borrowed from banks at high interest rates to meet growth targets, creating an unsustainable debt burden. In an attempt to correct this, the Chinese government initiated a deleveraging strategy, tightening control on banks and imposing strict lending restrictions on non-bank financial institutions. However, these measures had significant repercussions on the Chinese economy, leading to a credit crunch. Now let's talk about what this all means for the rest of the world and what lessons we can learn from China's crisis. Firstly, China's banking crisis could affect global trade. As China's economy struggles, its imports decrease, impacting countries that export to China. For example, Chinese demand for raw materials such as iron ore and copper has significantly declined, affecting commodity exporting countries. Secondly, the lack of supply from China can make other countries more attractive to foreign investors. India, for instance, could benefit from the shift as businesses look for alternative manufacturing bases. As for lessons to learn, the most crucial one is the importance of transparency in the economy. China's real estate bubble burst partly due to a lack of transparency, causing a wealth effect that negatively impacted consumer spending. When citizens saw their property investments devalued, they cut down on their spending, leading to deflationary pressures. The lack of transparency also extended to the banking sector. Many shadow banking activities operated in the shadows, make it difficult to assess the true extent of financial risks. This opacity allowed risky lending practices to persist and checked until they reached a breaking point. Finally, it's essential never to take on risky loans in the banking sector. China's major banks are facing credit rating downgrades, and the government is stepping in to deal with state-owned asset management companies involved in risky investments. It's a stark reminder that responsible lending practices are essential for financial stability. All in all, China's economy is facing significant challenges with a banking crisis, a real estate crisis, and a credit crisis all unfolding simultaneously. While the situation in China has a limited direct impact on the United States, it serves as a reminder of the importance of good governance, transparency, and responsible lending. As we conclude this deep dive into China's economic challenges, we're left with a crucial question. What does the future hold for the world's second largest economy? Will China's leadership navigate these crises successfully, or are we witnessing the beginning of a new era? Now it's your turn to share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. What lessons do you think the world can learn from China's current situation? And most importantly, how do you see these developments affecting the global economic landscape? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video informative and subscribe to Futuristic Tech and AI for all the latest tech news and updates. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one.